Templating engines make it easy for you to tightly couple together both the front end and the back end, making it much easier to manage everything directly from the back end. This includes creating the front end, rendering the front end, and even sending the front end to the client directly from the server. So let's take a look at these templating engines and the one that we're going to be using today is called EJS. So what exactly is a templating engine? Well, a templating engine is an easy way for you to create full stack JavaScript applications without the need to have a separate front end and back end. Everything can be managed directly from the back end. So these templating engines are going to create templates of the front end. That way you can create the front end and you can pass in any data that you want. This includes anything from authentication tokens to anything that may need to be grabbed from a database and then you can add that to those templates before it's even sent off to the client. Then you can easily render these templates on the server and then send everything as a completed package to the client. So this can minimize the need or completely even eliminate the need to send requests to the server as soon as the page loads to get required information to load the page. So in a standard front end application, you would load the page and then you would send requests off to the server to get maybe user information. Maybe you have posts that you need to get. Maybe you have items that you need to get anything that you may serve from a database, you would normally have to send those requests to the server as soon as the client's page loads to retrieve that information to finish loading the page. But in this case, whenever we are using templating engines, we don't actually need to send those requests anymore. We can actually bundle that all up into one single package and then send it off to the client without any need for excess requests. So as I said before, we're going to be utilizing the EJS templating engine, which is one of many templating engines that you can choose from. So let's go ahead and quickly install. We're going to say npm install EJS. And while that's installing, we're going to say const EJS is equal to require EJS just like that. And now EJS is available for us to use. Now we need to create a place to store these templates. And generally you'll see something like this where in the root directory where our server and everything is currently running, we're going to create a folder called views. And then inside of that views folder is where we're going to store all of our templates. So I'm just going to create an index dot EJS file and this is going to be our main page the default page for our website now we can go ahead and start writing our HTML and these EJS files they work exactly like an HTML file but there's just a few extra things added to them that we can utilize that we'll take a look at later so we can actually go ahead and use our Emmet abbreviations in here as well so we can say h1 and we can say hello from EJS and we can go ahead and save that. Now, before we can actually send this file to the client, we actually have to set a few things on the server before we can actually do that. So let's go ahead and head over to the server and set the settings that we need to set. So the first setting that we need to set is we need to tell Express exactly where we are holding these views at. So we could easily do that by saying app.set and we could specify that we are setting the setting views and we need to specify an absolute path to this views folder. So an easy way to do that is to specify a string template literal and we have this neat thing called underscore underscore dir name. And what this does is it's a value to the current directory. It's holding the absolute path to the current directory. So the current directory that we are currently in. And all we have to do here now is set the slash views. So it's going to be the entire path up until this directory. And then we can just say, hey, on top of that, we're going to send it to the views folder. So that's specifying to express exactly exactly where we're holding all of our views at. Now, another setting that we have to set is we need to set the view engine. So we can say app.set and we can specify view engine 
and we can specify that the view engine that we're using is EJS. Now there's one more thing that we actually have to do. We have to render this page so that it can be sent to the client. So in here in our app.git method, we are going to specify the res.render method and we are going to point to index. Now we can specify index just like this because we are telling us exactly where the views are being held. So Express knows exactly where the views are being being held so we don't have to specify a path and then we also were telling Express that we are using the EJS templating engine so we don't actually have to specify an extension for this while we still can we don't have to because Express already knows or it's assuming that it knows that we are using the EJS templating engine because we told it hey, we're using the EJS view engine. So now we can go ahead and save that and we can go ahead and start our server. So we can say nodemon and we can go ahead and start our server. Now we can go ahead and pull in our web browser and we can go to localhost or we can go to 127.00.1 colon and then specifying the port that the server is currently running on so we can specify port 3000 so we can say port 3000 here and if we load this page we can see this ejs file is now being served to the client. So now we have both our back end and our front end both being managed by Express and is being served directly from the back end by Express as well. And we don't have any extra files for the front end where anything is not being managed by Express. Now there's a few differences whenever we're working with the front end files that we have to account for whenever we are doing this. Mainly the CSS and the front end JavaScript files. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can do that now. Now to serve these CSS and these JavaScript files on the front end, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna first create a folder in our root directory here that we are going to hold all of our static assets. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna call it public just like that. And this is a normal convention that you'll see all over the place. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to separate the CSS and the JavaScript inside of here. So I'm going to create another folder called CSS and then another folder inside of it called JavaScript. So we have the public folder and then inside of that we have both the CSS folder and the JavaScript folder. Now inside of the CSS folder, I'm going to create a file called styles Dot CSS. Now let's go ahead and add a style here. So let's say the H1 and we're going to set the color to green and we can go ahead and save that. Now if we refresh over here, we're not actually going to see anything happen because there's a couple different things that we actually have to do before we can actually surf these files. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to head over to our server. And on our server, we need to tell Express exactly where these files are being held. And Express has a specific option called express.static that tells it where all of our static assets assets like the CSS and the JavaScript files are being held. So we can say app.use and we can specify express.static and we can specify the path to those static assets that we are using. Now I'm going to use the same trick we used up here with the underscore dir name. So I'm going to create a string template literal and I'm going to say underscore underscore dir name slash public. Now I'm specifying slash public because that is the highest level directory where both of them can be found and it's not going directly inside of any of the folders. So the public directory holds both the CSS and the JavaScript. So since we need access to both of those, public is the highest level directory that I could specify as the static express files here on the back end. And I'll show you how inside of here that we actually get the rest of them. So we can go ahead and link and we need to specify the link 
to that specific file. Now this is in terms of the backend because remember, whenever we are sending this stuff, it's going to be rendered before it's sent to the client. So this is in terms of this express.static right here. So we need to basically on the front end, add on to this to go to exactly the file that we need. So that's why I stopped at the public directory and didn't specify CSS or JavaScript because we need access to both of them. So let's go ahead over here and we can specify the path to that CSS. So we're gonna say slash CSS slash styles dot CSS just like that. Now, if we refresh over here, you can see those styles have been applied. And if we wanted to include the JavaScript file, we could include a script that is being deferred with a source exactly like we did with the CSS. So we could say slash JS slash whatever file that we want to specify. So we could say script.js and we can go ahead and we can create that script dot js file over here and i'm not really going to use that file i'm just showing you how we can specify the path inside of these templates to these static assets and of course you can see over here where it is being added to those files because that color has now turned to green. So now you know how to serve these files from Express. So let's now go ahead and take a look at these extra special features that I've been talking about this whole video and what makes these templating engine files different from a regular HTML file. So these templating engines, they have a few extra tags in them that we can utilize. Now this is where these templating engines differ some because depending on which templating engine that you are using it's going to have a different set of tags it's going to have a different syntax for their templating so this is specific to EJS right here but the concept of utilizing these templating tags is universal between them it's just the syntax and the way that they're added in is different depending on the templating engine that you are using so we have have a few different tags here. So we have the EJS tag and this is used for control flow. So if we go ahead and open one of these up, this is generally used for things like loops or if statements or conditional checks, anything that is not going to be outputting something to the screen. It's going to be used for controlling the flow of the document. So let's say we want to loop through something. Maybe we're pulling posts from a database and we need to loop through and add a hundred of them to the page. So we can actually write just straight up JavaScript in here. So we could say for let i equal zero, i is less than five, i plus plus. And then down here, we need to add a closing tag as well. So we're going to use the exact same tag and we're just going to close off that for loop there. So we have an opening for loop up here that has all of the information about the for loop. So how it is defined up here. And then we just have the closing tag down here. Now inside of here, we can still actually write HTML. So we could say we want to have 10 or five divs in here that say hello there. So if we save this and then we refresh over here, we should have five div tags with the text hello there inside of them. And this is a big reason why you should use templating engines if you're going to go this route with the server side rather than the decoupled front end and back end version. Because it makes it much easier to accept things from a database and then add them to the screen. So like right here, this could possibly be data from a database that we're looping through and it'll add one at a time as it continues to loop through and it'll loop through however many times you want. Now this is just one of the tags that EJS has that we can utilize. Another tag that we can utilize is this tag all the way down here at the bottom, the output tag. Now what the output tag is going to do is it's going to take a JavaScript operation, it's going to do that operation. So maybe you have a variable containing something and it's going to output the value 
from that operation to the screen. Now we don't really have anything that we can do with that just yet. We don't have any data we can play with that just yet, but we will here in a second. So let's go ahead and save that for then. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and head over to the server here. And I've gone ahead and added some data here. We're pretending that we're pulling data from a database. And I've got an object with a few different things, maybe a user, and an age and an image. And we're going to utilize this data. Like I said, maybe we're pulling this information from a server and we're actually going to pass this information from the backend here into the template before we actually send it to the client. So the way that we can do that is we can actually on the res.render down here, after we specify the template that we are using, we can specify the locals that we are going to use. So inside of an object, it has to be inside of an object, we can specify the locals that we want available inside of that template. So I've gone ahead and I've already got this inside of an object here. So I can actually just pass in a reference, that data value, and that is going to work perfectly fine. You can add the data value there, or you can add an inline object just like this. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick with the data variable that we've created created up here and you can create whatever data you want as long as it is an object now back inside of our templating we can actually utilize that object so we can access those via locals dot and then whatever value so it's going to be passed in and the value that we're going to access it with is locals and then we can access locals dot user locals dot age or locals dot image or whatever other values that you have that you want to send to the template. So we can access locals.user just like this. And if we refresh, you should see the output of that operation here. So this right here, output that value that's stored in user, which is Kylan. Now we can do more than just output something like this. So let's say we want to say H2 and I want to say hello there and I want to output the user's name. So I want to say hello there, and then I want to output locals.user. And we can do that. And if we refresh, you can see hello there, Kyland. Now, if that value was different, maybe we could say it was Jim. That's going to work the exact same way. So this way we are creating templates that then output whatever value we pass to them so that way they can be different depending on who or what is requesting it. Now we can also say, let's say we want a P tag and we can say you are, and then we could output again, we could output locals.age and if we save that and refresh over here, we can see that you are 54 popped up. And again, of course, that 54 is coming from this age value that is on this data object that is then being passed in to this template here, which is then being accessed via locals dot whatever value. And we could also do this inside of just about anything inside of here. So I've already got an image in there as well. So we could create an image tag and inside of the source, I can actually use this as well. So I could output locals.image and if we save that and refresh that, now you can see that image has popped up as well. And that is the link right here to where I got that image from. Now, another cool thing that we can do with EJS is we can actually create partials. So maybe we don't want to include the head every single time, or we want to include it, but we don't want to have to write it out every single time that we create a new template. So we can create a partial. So to do this, we're going to go to our view Use, and we're going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it partials and inside of our partials folder I'm going to create a new file called head.ejs and we're going to store the head inside of here so I'm just going to cut this out of this template here and I'm going to paste it inside of this template now inside of the template that we're sending to the user we can just use the HTML unescaped tag to output that head in each one of our templates so we can say include and we can pass in a reference to partials slash head 
And again, of course, we can include the .ejs or we don't have to. It really doesn't matter. This is all done by Express. So if we save that now, and let's just go ahead and add an H1 so we can see that that green text, that green color here, is still going to be applied. So we can say hello. And if we save that, now if we go over here and refresh our page, you can see that we're getting that page rendered properly. And it says hello, that is green colored. And if we inspect here, we pull up our inspector menu and we look at the head itself, we can actually see that we've got that head, that exact same head over here, inside of here. So we've got our CSS link here, we've got our script tag here, and then everything else that's inside of that head as well. And that is how you can create partials. And this can be done for all kinds of different things. Maybe you want to do it for the head, maybe you want to do it for a footer, maybe there's some repetition part of every single page that you want to include inside of each one of your templates that you don't want to repeatedly have to write out every single time you can create a partial and then just include that inside of the EJS file like I've done right here. Now before I let you go, I want to take a look at one good example of how we can utilize this and put everything all together. So I'm going ahead and created some more data and I've put this data inside of an array. So we're going to pretend that this data is coming from a database and this is the structure it looks like once we receive that data from that database. And and we're going to say that each one of these objects in here is a user post. Maybe it's a social media site that we're creating and we need to pass that data on to the template. So we've got the data array here and this is containing all of the different posts. Now down here, we actually need to change this a little bit because no longer is it an object, but it's actually an array. And if you remember, we have to pass the template an object and only an object. So the easiest way to get around this is just to put it inside of an object just like this and that will be perfectly fine so that way it will be accessible via locals.data on the front end. Now if we go ahead and save that I want to take a look at this right here real quick because I went ahead and added CSS of 100 pixels by 100 pixels for each one of the images so they don't get too stupendously large but I just want to add that in there. Now let's go ahead and head to the EJS template. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create the control flow. So we need to loop through that array whenever we get it inside of the template so that we can output each one of those individually. So we're going to say locals dot data and we're going to say dot for each and we're going to pass in each post just like normal JavaScript, just like we normally would. And then we can end that control flow tag there. Now we can go ahead and write the HTML that we want. So maybe we have an H1 tag, or let's say it's an H2 tag. And we can say, hello there. And we want to output their name. So we could say the output tag and we can say post dot user. Remember the post is going to be each one of these individual ones in here, these individual objects inside of this array because we are looping through that data array. So we're going to access post dot user for the user's name. Then we're going to have a P tag that says you are and we'll output again. We'll say post dot age to output the user's age there inside of a p tag and then again we'll use the image tag and inside of the source we can output again the post dot image and make sure i spelled that right yeah image and now if we save that we should be able to refresh and the problem here is that we need this inside of here and actually we need this to be down here, just like this. Now we should be able to refresh and we should be able to see all of those posts here, each individually with their name, their age, 
and their image all being output in a line just like you would see on a social media site. This is a pretty bad social media site, but you know what I'm saying. And that is about it for using EJS templates and how we can use it with Express. Now we went over a lot of different stuff today. So if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments section down below. I'll answer any questions that you have. Otherwise, if you did like the video, make sure you slap a like on it. Check out the full playlist. Link is right down there. Make sure you subscribe and I will see you in the next one.